Hey everybody, it's Eric here again, and I finally have some data on my Starlink install. And it's been running for a little bit, and there was five things that really, really surprised me that I was not expecting. And so stay tuned, do me a favor, quickly like, share, subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. Got more stuff and more data to come here. So stay tuned, but let's jump right into it. All right, so the top five things I was not expecting. Let's jump right into it. I think I said that. But it got shipped to my door and I pulled up and the box is huge. Uh, so, I mean, take a look at the size of this box. And I've been used to dealing with a lot of satellites and they're good size. Your Viasats, your HughesNets, I mean, they're really good sized dishes. That's why they're not great mobile dishes. That's why you see a lot of that out there. And plus they don't like you moving them. But besides the point, so I arrived and wow, this box is huge. If you look at a lot of the posts online and the pictures online, it's like, no, it looks small. Maybe it's that big, but no, it is huge. But check, check out my picture here. Um, I mean, in comparison, if you look at some of the other dishes that, uh, that I've done installs for in the past, is it's definitely, it's still smaller, but not by much. I was expecting a little round, you know, almost plate style dish to show up at my door and be really mobile and easy to set up. But it, it's a little bit larger than I was expecting, but it's still lighter and more flexible, I guess you can call it, than, than the bigger dishes. You know, uh, show you a picture of the one I'm, I'm holding of the other dishes. Uh, but still pretty good size. So keep that in mind. And it wasn't light either. I mean, the weight on this puppy was, was pretty huge. So anyway, expect it to be bigger than you think. So let's, let's start there. Um, the next thing which really got me, and I've been installing satellites for years, uh, you know, original direct TV stuff. Uh, and it's all for personal stuff, not professionally. Uh, you've got, you know, Viasat stuff, you've got HughesNet stuff. And first of all, those dishes are really hard to point and they all point south. And so as long as you've got a clear view of this little point in the sky, uh, you're good. And you've got service. I mean, again, it's it's a chore to, to, to aim them. They've got to be level. But it's e but once you're connected, it's, it's on. It's locked on. You're good. What shocked me with these, and it could be because I'm in the southern part of the United States, is these things tend to automatically point north, which means that if you don't have a good view of the northern sky you may not get um, good service out of this because it looks like a lot of the satellites are really positioned north. And keep in mind, they're launching 60 satellites like every three weeks. So it's going to quickly become more saturated. And maybe the expectation I was expecting where it would be pointing straight up in the air will become a reality. I was focused on this, this clear view above my, my sky above me and was expecting it to have maybe a little tint, but, you know, be straight up. That's not the case, and I am having trouble um, with trees and things like that because of the angle in which it's trying to uh, point north at this point. So keep in mind, you've got to have a clear view of the north sky right now. Maybe the farther north you are within the U.S., it's less of a problem, but it's certainly um, something to think about. I think it'll get better, but that's where that's at. Uh, so the next thing is the coverage. We are still in the better than nothing beta, and I understand why they're calling it that. It's because, again, they're still launching satellites. But I connected this up to our my simple LAN, which no plug there intended, but I'm going to plug it. Um, and I pulled out some of the stats for the last couple of days just to see kind of how it was performing. And you can see here, the latency is amazing most of the time. We're talking 20 to 30 milliseconds to Google and, you know, important things like that. You can even check these things in the app. Uh, but the dropouts were really um, amazing. And, and in the app, it shows you reasons as to why it's dropping out, whether it's obstruction, no satellites, or maybe they're doing maintenance or something like that. The one thing I want to throw out stress is because everybody's excited about this and it is absolutely better than nothing. But if you need to do Zoom calls on this thing right now or something to that effect, it's not ideal quite yet. At least again, could be the further north you go, my assumption is, is the better it's going to work. But keep in mind, you're going to have these 20 second dropouts of no connectivity at all. You can kind of get away with it on Netflix and some of the streaming services, but I've noticed Disney Plus absolutely hates it. And so it, it, it you know, it's something to deal with. Absolutely better than nothing. When it runs, it screams, but the coverage is, is kind of lacking in some areas. And I know, again, I expect it to, to do better performance wise and, and, and those kind of things, but keep, keep an eye on these metrics is, 
you're going to have to have something if you have mission critical stuff, maybe an SD WAN or something to be able to switch between it when it goes down and something else. But I do want to point out it is fast. Like when it's working, not only are your ping times good, but you're getting 300 uh, megabits down. I mean, the streaming speeds are fast. It is impressive. But it's those weird cutout times where you've got nothing. It's just enough. It doesn't go long. It's just enough to be annoying and so that that's kind of on the, on the performance piece there and the um, number four number five really comes down to it's still kind of tied in again it's great for gaming the latency and and the speeds and I think I mentioned that a minute ago and kind of as we were transitioning there but they're really good until it's all gone and it will be all gone for a short amount of time and it pops back up so again if you're wanting to, to use it for gaming or some of these other things, mission critical real time stuff. Again, works fine for streaming. It's going to it's it's going to shock you a little bit in in that perspective. And so, I was very 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 excited when this came a little bit ago. I am still very excited. I am impressed with its potential um, and what it can do, especially as the mobility stuff that uh, Elon Musk announced a few uh, weeks ago, saying that by the end of the year you won't even have to update your address in there. You'll have to just move it and it'll go but there's firmware updates that have to go out there has to be service in the area um, I traveled with it a little bit about 20 miles this weekend just to kind of see how it looked and it locked on it worked speeds were a little bit slower um, but even with a wide open sky I was maybe 10 miles from anyone in a completely unopened sky it still did lose service I was hoping it was just my trees in my area but it still did lose service and was intermittent from times and so if you need a mission critical stuff consider combining it with the cellular technology or or maybe something else but I have to say it absolutely blows away traditional satellite I mean 20 to 30 milliseconds versus you know 700 on a traditional satellite Beauty of a traditional satellite, though, is you, you're, you're hitting a pin in the sky. And once you're locked, you're locked. This is a little bit different because if satellites are moving, you can see in the maps where they're connecting and, and they're moving in real time. And if there's not one in your view, there's not little service. It doesn't slow down. I mean, it's, it's nothing. Um, so those are some things to keep in mind. Some huge surprises that I had, um, I wasn't expecting. And I thought, hey, I did all the research and I knew what was going on. Little surprise there. But anyway, all in all, this is a game changer. This is a life changer. I'm going to do other videos. I mean, how this is going to change um, rural working conditions and things like that. Um, it, it really is. Um, but it, it's got a, it's got some tune-up time to go with it. So anyway, thank you for watching. This doesn't make me any less excited about it. It's just a reality check of developing technology. And, you know, hey, please subscribe if this interests you and you want to see more. Uh, I'm going to do more uh, heavy tests and statistics, not just some of the basic tests that some of the YouTube uh, people are out there doing, but some really detailed stuff to show mission critical and, and how you can solve some of these things. So anyway, please like and subscribe. And if you know anybody looking at this, please share it. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.